Okay, we're going to do derivatives of logarithmic functions and exponentials. Derivative of exponentials is the next section, but I find it much easier to present both of them at the same time. So our goal So our goal is to first find the derivative of e to the x and natural log of x. We will use the definition of derivative to find the first one, and then we'll find the derivative of any base for the exponential and the log. Before we get started on number one, so this is the limit that is equal to e. And if you ever forget it, or you have an inkling it might be e, what you can do is just plug in a big number. Like let's just do 100. And calculate that on your calculator. And I get 2.705, so it's close to 2.71. And the bigger the number we put in, the closer to e we get. Okay, so that's to the first power. So the second definition I want for e I can use this, and we're going to use a substitution. So then we'll get 1 plus h, because we'll, we're substituting 1 over x is h. And then, because we're substituting 1 over x is h. So then if that's true, what is x equal to? If I solve for x, I get x equal 1 over h. So that becomes 1 over h. And since we've turned it to h's, as x approaches infinity, what does h approach? We need h. And for that, I want to look here. So as x goes infinity, it's 1 over infinity. It looks like it'll approach 0. So therefore, this is also equal to e. We're going to need that for our proof. So we're going to use the definition of derivative. So the f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Let's do a little bit of algebra. So this is where we're going to use this fact right here. We have this e, and we have the limit of h goes to 0. Let's highlight what we have. We have this, and so I'm going to replace e, this e, with this. So this e right here gets replaced with all of that. Those are the same h's, that's why I did them both yellow. Power to power, those will cancel. We get h over h. And since there's no h equals zero, h to plug in for zero, we get e to the x. An extremely difficult one to memorize. We can also write it out, u in terms of x. You just copy it and then you take the derivative of the inside, or we can just write that as du dx. Again, that would be using the chain rule. Okay, that was our first one. Our second one is the natural log of x. Now we can use the definition of the derivative again, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna use some techniques that we'll be using to find derivatives in this course. So I'm going to use a technique we did in the last section, and we're going to find it implicitly. Clearly, the x's and y's are not mixed up here, but let's use what we know. We know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So why don't we change this to its exponential form? And we can do that by taking e of both sides, raising both sides to e. These are inverses, so that's x. So now we can take, since we want to find dy, dx, we want to take the derivative of x of both sides. So on the left, this is the chain rule. This is like my u. It's e to the u. You copy it, and then you take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x in terms of x is just 1. If you want to chain rule it, dx dx is 1. That's what we get. This is dy dx. And again, we want to solve for dy dx. So we Divide both sides by e to the y to solve for it. And it, we're almost there. 
that's our answer, but we did start off with a function all in terms of x, so we can get that back into x. So we can replace y here with natural log of x. We started off with this. That was our original equation. And these are inverses, so this is one over x. And if we make it a function of u for chain rule, this goes on the bottom, and then we chain rule it. Take the derivative of that in terms of x. Okay, so those are the first two. The next one, we're going to do b to the x instead of e to the x. So we're going to change that base to any base. So we will call this, we'll do this again. Well, it's already an exponential. But what we want, though, is we want this y to come down. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides, since we know the der derivative of natural log. But now that we took the natural log of both sides, we can use the property of log and we can use the power rule. So that x goes in the front. Now we can take the derivative of both sides. Again, we want to find dy dx. So we take the derivative of both sides. So over here, it's 1 over y dy dx, chain rule, implicit differentiation, what do we want to call it? But y is in terms of x, so we have to chain rule it. Now x, there's no power, so it's a linear. But note, natural log of b is a constant, because b is a constant. So that, just like 3x would be 3, the derivative of 3x would be 3. So the right side is natural log of b. You can think, bring the constant out, and then it's the derivative of x, which is just 1. You can look at it that way too. And so now solve for dy dx. And what was y equal to? It was b to the x. So we've got to put that back in. So therefore, we found it. The derivative in terms of x of b to the x is b to the x natural log of b. The derivative of e to the x was e to the x. But then it would be natural log of e, which would cancel. So that works for the e to the x. And if we want to write it out, if it's a Using a chain rule is u function of x. We copy it, right? It gets copied. And we have to have our natural log of b as part of our formula. And then we have to chain rule it. And then that's the derivative of the inside, du dx. Okay, our last equation is number four. Well, here we can actually just use change of base. And we're going to change it to natural log because that's the one we know. So log base b of x. We'll change it to natural log of x, natural log of b. Natural log of b is a constant. That can come out. And then this is, we copy the constant. The natural log of x is 1 over x. Here's our formula. And if you want to write it out in terms of u, it's easier to see it when you actually do it. We have a function of x here, u in terms of x going to be 1 over u times natural log of b, and then chain rule, the derivative of u in terms of x, of that side function. So I do think it's helpful to see them all sitting next to each other. And maybe you want to practice writing all of these out with a u also. I'll do it here really fast. Chain rule, and then chain rule, and then chain rule. Okay, now let's do some examples. So that's a, a u situation. We copy it, and then we take the derivative of the inside function, which is my power, which it looks better with the 6x in the front. Okay, so our base is half. So basically we copy it. It's like e to the x we copy or e to the u we copy. Copy this exactly. And then this will be times the natural log of that base and then times the derivative of the inside function, which is my inside function is that power. So now we've got to work out that derivative of the inside function. It's just one-fifth times t. So that's just one-fifth. We copy this still. So this is one-fifth. And then if we wanted to, we could um, simplify this. 
we can use the logarithmic properties. So we can subtract natural log of 1, natural log of 2. You remember, this is 0. Natural log of 1 is 0. Punch it in your calculator if you don't see it. And so here's our answer. Okay, so we just start in. So it's log base b of a function. It's 1 over that function divided by the natural log of that base, and then the derivative of that inside function. So that's our basic formula. It's 1 over that. It's not base e, so it's divided by the natural log of that base, and then chain rule it. And we're not done. we got to chain rule it. That's 28x to the third. We put that on top, and it looks like we can simplify it. By the way, if we wanted to, we could have applied some trig rules first. We could even go one step further and apply the power rule if we wanted to. And then we can take the derivative now. Make sure you're labeling it correctly. Don't label derivative until you take the derivative. So this is a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. This constant's in the front, comes out, and then the derivative of log base 3 of x is 1 over x times the natural log of that base, and we get the same thing. Give you any ideas? So again, instead of saying 1 over this times the derivative of that, we'd have to do the chain rule, and then we'd have to do the quotient rule. That'd be a big mess. Why not work out some properties first? So the first property is the quotient rule. Make sure you know these properties good though. Now we could just go ahead and um, take the derivative here or we can expand that further if we like. I'm just gonna take the derivative now. It's 1 over 3x squared times the derivative of 3x squared minus 1 over, we cannot expand that further, times the derivative now taking those derivatives, 6x, again, it's over 1, so we can keep that on top. Again, I'm just taking this and putting it on the top. The derivative of that is minus 2x. Looks like we've got pluses now. It looks like we have some simplification. And there's our answer. So we can just find that. So it's just the natural log of some function. So it's 1 over that function, just like it's the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. We copy that function, and then we take the derivative of inside that function. So this derivative I could put on top now, and that's our answer. So I just wanted to point out, I haven't been, I wasn't putting absolute values up in those functions of natural log of x's, so you were, we were assuming the arguments were positive. I didn't say that, but they were, they would have to be. But let's do this. Let's write out our function, natural log of absolute value of x. We have to do it into cases. So again, we can just drop it if the x is positive. If x is negative, we got to put an extra negative in there so it is positive. So now we have to do it. If x is greater than or equal to 0, we already know. We're looking here, and that's 1 over x. We already knew that. Our second case. Now we're replacing this with this. And then it's 1 over that argument, and then the derivative of that argument. We have to chain rule that, because it's not plain old x. So this, what's the derivative of minus x? It's minus 1. So look at that, we get the same thing. But I'm gonna say using properties of logs. Well, how can we use properties of logs if we don't see any logs in the problem? Well, that's what we're gonna do. We're going to take the log of both sides. We could put this, but we also know we're gonna get the same derivative, so it doesn't really matter. I'll keep it this way. So before I take the derivative, we're going to use properties of logs. This is a product, and I don't need an absolute value for x squared because it's positive. This is a half power. I'll copy the left side. 
And now we're going to take the derivative of both sides, term by term on the right. So we know the derivative of, we just did this, it's 1 over y. We have to chain rule it because y is in terms of x. And then we just do each of these. And if we wanted to, we could do the power rule there. You, you see it doesn't matter if you do or you don't. So we will apply the power rule. So it's 2 times 1 over x. That's 2 times 1 over x. Chain rule. And I don't have to chain rule this because the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1. If you want to write that, it's not necessary. It's just 1. We're not quite done. We need to solve for just dy dx. So we need to clear our fraction or isolate the dy dx and get it in all in terms of x. So we substitute back in right here. Got to put that in for y. y was... And there's our answer. We can leave it like that. One more example, actually. So be careful here. We have a variable raised to a variable. So we cannot use the power rule. We cannot use the last exponential derivative of exponential either. But what we can do is something similar to what we just did with the last problem. Yeah, take the natural log of both sides so that we can bring it down, the variable power down as a product. Yeah, so that is the power rule. And then we can take the derivative of both sides. Product rule. And there's our answer in terms of x. Don't forget to back substitute that y because we started off all in terms of x. Okay, that's how we do it. Have a good day.